انما هو التوحيد وتوحيد العباده بالذات اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته Welcome to the uh, initial lectures and uh, inaugurating a lecture series on the history of Islam. Uh, this is being presented by uh, the Tawheed Project. And uh, the goal of this lecture, the goal of this lecture series is to present uh, the history of Islam uh, to, uh, to the Muslim audience and to present this history within the context of understanding uh, from an Islamic perspective. So we have two goals for this lecture series, uh, to present the actual history of Islam uh, over the past 1400 centuries, 1400 years, uh, and to present this history within the context of uh, an Islamic perspective. Uh, my name is uh, Abu Zakaria Jamil, Dr. James Pavlin. Uh, I am currently a uh, part-time lecturer in Rutgers University in the Department of Religion and adjunct professor of history at William Patterson University. As Muslims, we know Allah Subhanahu who created the world. He created uh, the human race. Uh, and this uh, human race and this world and this universe uh, has a purpose and a meaning to it. Um, and the events of the past 200 years uh, put emphasis on this intellectual perspective that uh, many Muslims uh, consciously or unconsciously perhaps sense that uh, we, we've lost our way. Right. Now, of course, uh, the theological perspective also means having the um, uh, understanding that there's a purpose to this uh, creation and that we're headed towards a final end or final goal, uh, which is, of course, resurrection and judgment day. So with this in mind, we'll be uh, trying to place our history, trying to place our understanding in the uh, contemporary world within the context of looking at uh, the history in that, uh, in that manner. Uh, so what I want to do uh, for the, to complete this first session is to give a review of the topics that we're dealing with. Right. Now, the initial lecture series that I have in mind is going to be based on um, uh, what is usually described as the, uh, the first half, you might say, of Islamic history. We're dealing with 1,400 years of history. Uh, and there are, you know, in a historical perspective, some convenient uh, events that sort of mark this history. Uh, so the first uh, phase that we're going to be looking at is uh, the, the beginnings of uh, Islamic history up until the end of the Abbasid Caliphate. The Abbasid Caliphate, of course, uh, came to an end uh, at the hands of the Mongol invasions uh, in the year 656 of the Hijra, uh, the year 1258. So this first series of lectures uh, will deal with the first half of Islamic history. Then, uh, inshallah, we will move to the second half and look at the history uh, from the end of the Abbasid Caliphate up until the modern times. With this in mind, uh, I'll take a brief overview of the main topics, and then we're going to re, uh, spend a, a little time in a second session to this general introduction uh, to go over that notion of what is an Islamic mindset. Uh, topic one is going to deal with the historiography. This means how do we do history? How do we understand history? How do Muslims know their history? Uh, and this is going to deal with some very basic things in the development of the early Muslim historical mindset. Right? From looking at the, the, the pre-Islamic Arabia, looking at the life of Prophet Muhammad, uh, but also looking at how this history is transmitted. Muslims have, alhamdulillah, a very unique uh, perspective and a very unique methodology known as the Isnad or Isnad system. How this 
information about the religion, about the Prophet Muhammad, uh, about the uh, 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 early conquests and, and expansion of Islam, the development of the religion, all passes through this Isnad system. So that's going to be a major uh, focus for us to understand. Uh, we'll sec the second topic, we will look at pre-Islamic Arabia in particular, uh, looking at the conditions for the time of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. Then the third topic will go into the, the life of Muhammad, right? and that will be looking at, uh, not in detail, but an overview of the major events uh, marking the, the history, the biography of Muhammad Sallallahu and the early Muslim community of the Sahaba. Uh, the fourth topic is going to be the, the Rashidun Caliphate uh, from the years 11 uh, to 40 of the, uh, of the Hijra, uh, corresponding to 632-661 of the Common Era. This will be a look at Abu Bakr, uh, Umar, Uthman, Ali, and also uh, Al-Hasan ibn Ali. Uh, who is considered uh, 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 for that brief period that he was caliph uh, the fifth of the, uh, the Rashidun caliphs. Uh, then we'll move into the fifth topic on the Umayyad Caliphate uh, from 40 to 132 of the um, uh, Islamic calendar, uh, 661, 750. Right. Uh, we'll look at the general history uh, and uh, the problems also that emerged uh, within the Muslim community, right, and looking at the, the conflicts, the civil wars, uh, and then, of course, also the, the, the beneficial uh, aspects of the Umayyad Caliphate. Uh, as part of that, our sixth topic is going to look at the history of the early sectarian groups. Right? Now, of course, we know in Islamic history from very early on, sectarian movements uh, emerged, uh, dissenting uh, groups emerged or broke away from uh, the main group of Muslims, uh, Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. And so we need to understand the historical aspect, the historical impact of these uh, uh, sectarian groups, but also what they have uh, done in the terms of how Islamic theology, how Islamic beliefs had developed. So we're going to focus on four major groups, uh, the Khawarij, the Murjia, the Mu'tazila, and the Shia, and to understand who they are, how they developed, and uh, how they relate to Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Then uh, we'll move into topic seven, uh, the Abbasid Caliphate, uh, and we're going to look at it from the, er the first half of the Abbasid Caliphate, from the rise of the Abbasids in 132 of the Hijra up until the year 334. All right, 750 to 945 of the Common Era. 945 is chosen because we know that at that time the Caliphate, the Abbasid Caliphate, went into a period of weakness. Uh, a, a, a Shiite family known as the Buyids uh, came to power in Baghdad and they took over control of the Caliphate. The Abbasid Caliphs remained uh, the Caliphs, but they were figureheads. Uh, and uh, we had this uh, very important shift in power uh, that took place. Also, as part of that, in, the, in, the, in topic eight, we're going to look at the Islamic dynasties that began to emerge. Uh, and this is going to go from 205 to uh, 656 of the, uh, of the Hijra, uh, 821 to 1258 of the Common Era. Uh, because although there was a, uh, an Abbasid Caliphate, uh, we know that the, the Ummah broke up into many, many different smaller kingdoms, uh, um, uh, sultanates, uh, uh, various dynasties emerged. Uh, and this is also very important to understand. Uh, uh, again, if we just imagine the, 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 the map of the Islamic world stretching from uh, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain, Morocco, North Africa, all the way across to Central Asia and going into India, it's a huge territory. And of course, alhamdulillah, the, uh, the beliefs, the practices of, of Islam uh, have united the Muslims, but for political and economic reasons, there's also been many, many um, uh, uh, breakaway governments, uh, uh, fragmented uh, 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 political order, you might say. 
Uh, after this overview of the history, we'll, we'll go into topic nine, which is uh, a look at the hadith and the tafsir and the sharia. What is the history of the development of these very important topics within Islam? Um, for Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'at, we know that uh, understanding these uh, uh, issues are very important. What, is, what are the hadith? How were they collected? How were they uh, uh, you know, organized and presented? Uh, how does the tafsir uh, develop, the Quran commentary? Uh, and what are the developments that lay out the basic framework of what the Sharia is? Uh, then we'll move into topic 10, which is a look at theology and philosophy. Right. Again, this is going to be a broad overview. What are the major theological movements and developments that took place? Some of this will go back to the, the sectarian groups. Right. Um, and we'll also look at how the Muslim uh, Ummah, how the Muslim community uh, absorbed outside knowledge. Uh, the Muslims uh, were uh, inheritors, you might say, of uh, ancient Greek uh, knowledge. Uh, the, the philosophies of Plato and Aristotle and others, of course, came into the Islamic world and had a major impact on how Muslims think, uh, the, their ulama, the scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah wal-Jama'at had to respond to many of the ideas that uh, were, were brought into the Islamic world and how it affect Muslims' understanding of the nature of, of, of God, the nature of Allah, uh, and a whole host of issues right, that come up because of these outside influences. Right. Uh, this will uh, lead us into Sufism, right, or topic 11, uh, a major movement, of course, that, that develops in the Islamic world. Uh, and uh, understanding what Sufism is, uh, sometimes referred to as tasawwuf, uh, how does it uh, develop, uh, what ideas does it have, where does it correspond with Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'at, where does it uh, deviate from, from these ideas. And since Sufism is an impact right up until today, understanding the history, of course, is very important. Uh, then we'll finish up the, this first series of lectures uh, with topic 12, looking at the Crusades right, uh, from 488 to 693 of the Hijra, 1095, 1294 of the Common Era. What were the Crusades? What impact did they have? How does it affect uh, the Islamic world at that time? Uh, this will be followed by topic 13, which is the Ayyubids uh, from 578 to 658 of the, of the Hijra. 1183 to 1260, right? who were the Ayyubids, what was going on. Right? Of course, the most famous, uh, almost every Muslim knows the name Salahuddin, but who was he, what did he do, what did he accomplish, right? and what was the, um, uh, uh, the results or consequences of the rule of the Ayyubids. Finally, we'll finish with the, the Mongol invasions. Right? And so looking at who were the Mongols, uh, what had happened, what happens with the, the, the attack and the sack of Baghdad in uh, 656 of the Hijra, and what was the legacy uh, of, the, of the Mongols. Uh, that is what this sort of important transitional period, right? and what comes afterwards, of course, is uh, some very important issues. Right? Uh, many of the famous uh, scholars of Ahl Sunnah wa Jama'ah emerge, uh, in the uh, aftermath of the Mongols, from Ibn Taymiyyah to uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, Ibn Kathir and others. So going into uh, the, the 14th century, the, the 8th century of the Hijra, 14th century of the Common Era, um, partly what happens, of course, is the, in, uh, the, the, the impact from uh, those Mongol invasions. So we'll finish the first series with, with that. And then, as I said, uh, we, uh, by Allah's permission, we'll, we'll develop the uh, second series of lectures from the 13th, 14th century, 7th, 8th century of the Hijra uh, up until the present. So uh, this will conclude the first uh, session for this introduction, and then we will uh, move into the second session, which is going to be a look uh, at the uh, actual notions or ideas uh, associated with the um, uh, Islamic mindset.